Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Greetings, everyone. I'm Deaconess Lindsay Heald, and on behalf of Bishop Earl and Pastor Pamela Gilchrist, I'd like to welcome you this morning to our Palm Sunday service. Amen. I'm here to bring some very brief announcements, but first, let's please stand, if you are able, and we will pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for getting everyone here in-house here safely this morning, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We just thank you for moving in, in each and every one of our situations, Father God. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for helping us open our hearts to the word that you have prepared, especially for us today. May we glorify you uh, in the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are the River of Life Christian Church and the Waters of Life Outreach Ministry. We are one church with multiple outreaches. Our Sunday service is every uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. here at 739 Summit Avenue. Do come out and worship with us. We also have a live stream on our YouTube channel at ROLCCAV. A little housekeeping rule, you won't want to use the center aisle, so if you need to to leave, just exit on the outer row. Otherwise, your face will be right, right on YouTube. Amen? So thanks for that. Um, all are welcome also to join us on our um, before Sunday service for our morning Bible study each week. Amen. We meet in the fellowship hall, and we begin promptly at 9.30 a.m. This morning was especially awesome. Amen. Children's ministry is held on the second. Amen. Amen. <laughs> is held on the second and fourth Sundays for our, our children ages 3 through 12. So the children will meet downstairs today once Bishop dismisses them after worship. This month's theme has been the resurrection of Christ. Our midweek Bible study is Wednesday nights. Uh, Bible study is in-house at 7 p.m. at 999 Selby Avenue each Wednesday evening. Yeah. This is open to everyone, so come out and receive that midweek fill-up. Amen. New member classes are held each week on Zoom, so if you, desire, if you desire to be a member of this church, contact the office, and that number will be soon to follow. 12-step free indeed. Any 12-steppers? Our 12-step free indeed meeting is every Monday night at 7 p.m., also at 999 Selby. Uh, women's Fellowship is every first Saturday. The next fellowship is going to be on April 6th from 11 to 1. And our speakers will be Elder Bobby Collins and Deaconess Sharia Robinson. Amen. Men's Breakfast is on the third Saturday of every month at 9 a.m. And following our Men's Breakfast is always the Food Shelf, which starts at 11 a.m., so both are held at 999 Selby, and the next breakfast and food distribution will be on April 20th. Last call, Minnesota School, Graduate School of Theology spring semester starts this week, okay? So if you're interested, con contact the church office right away. I'm sure we can probably get you in. Amen. Resurrection Sunday is on March 31st. This is also going to be family day. So invite your family your extend, and your extended family and those maybe that you call family, amen, um, to enjoy this special service with us. And women, mark your calendars. <laughs> they know what I'm going to say. The annual women's conference is going to be on Friday and Saturday, May 3rd and 4th. The theme is, And God Made Woman and Unsung Heroes. Amen. Pre-sale tickets are on sale right now for $35, so do not miss this. Um, we have a lineup of incredibly dynamic speakers. Um, so if you're interested in reserving a ticket in advance or placing an ad in the ad book, uh, simply see Elder Bobby Collins. And ladies, we're looking for women that are willing to serve. Uh, there's going to be a sign-up sheet downstairs. So if you want to join us um, and serve, uh, please, please sign up. Amen. 
And if you need prayer anytime or you want information about our monthly and weekly ministries, please call the church office at 651-290-2348. Our purpose, the River and Waters of Life Church is called and anointed to build strong men, strong women, strong families, and the healing of the races, to see people healed, delivered, and made free by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's worship him. Amen. Come on, how many of you know God is good? He's great and he's greatly to be praised, right? Let's worship him in, let's worship him in here today. Put your hands together. Okay. 
worship you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, he's so good. He's so good. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. What matter of man is this? That he would lay down his life for a friend. And how many of you know he calls us friend? That he is our friend. That he is our confidant. confidant. That he is there for us in all the things, in all seasons of our life, God. And there's nobody greater than him. No one can satisfy like you, Jesus. No one. Nothing can satisfy like you, Jesus. And so this song talks about that and how we can search all over the world and still find nobody like Jesus. Not your mama, not your daddy, not that man, not that woman. No thing is greater than Jesus. So it goes like this. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. Come on, let's go into that. Let's go in, let's go in. Said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than you. Come on, you know the words to the song. Come on. Then I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. How many of you are witness? I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no. No, nobody greater than you. Say nobody greater. Jesus, nobody greater. Oh, tell him 
What matter of men is this that he would lay down his life for a friend, for a wretch like me? like Jesus <laughs> I don't know about you but that song is my song because I have searched all over I have tried looking for love in all kinds of places only to find myself right back in the arms of Jesus and there's no place like home in the arms of Jesus No, there's nobody like him. He's so good. Our kids can't satisfy us. Our spouse can't satisfy us like Jesus. They do a lot of great things, but there is no one like Jesus. And when the next one is doing things that we don't understand and we don't like or agree with, we can just run into the arms of Jesus and all of our peace and all of our joy is right there. We don't even have to be worried. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so what an honor it is to be in this place and be able to worship in his, at his feet. The one who came to save us all. The one who gave us an in to a relationship with God, a, co a direct connection to God. We go before Jesus and he goes before the Lord and makes us blameless. What an amazing savior, hallelujah. He is our savior. And so this song is just lifting him up and giving him the glory that's due to him for being our savior. And so it goes very, it's very simple. Just follow me. He goes, Say with me say Savior just like that it's easy it goes Just like that, we're my help. He's a 
present help in time of trouble. You're right. The man you helped. That's right, just like that. It's come to honor you. The man you held, the man you held has come to worship you. Anybody in here been healed of anything? He's a healer. From that broken heart, he's a healer. By the stripes on your back, we has come to honor you the man you healed the man you healed has come to worship you You're my father, the man you raised, the man you raised, hallelujah, has come to honor you. The man you raised, the man you raised, has come to worship you. Just lift up your worship in this place there. Take it up here. And he is the name above all names. We call him Jesus. Jesus. You're the name above all names. Jesus. Oh, you are Jesus. The man. of you. Let's keep it right there. Sing Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you're the name above all names. Jesus, Jesus. Your name is Jesus. The ones you to honor you, the ones you love, the ones you love have come to honor you, the man you saved has come to honor you, the man you healed. ever helped you out of anything oh my god many times over the man you saved has come to honor you the man you love the one you love has come to worship you hallelujah thank you for saving us jesus we honor you in this place, God. We lift you up and we magnify you. We thank you, God. You did not have to do it, but you did, God. You came and met us right where we were at, Jesus. Right where we were at in all of our filth and all of the muck and the miry clay. When we were trying to hang on for dear life, 
you came down and met us right there and pulled us out, God. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. the Lord.
worship in this place. You know, there's a lot of things in this world being glorified today. There's a lot of things, a lot of nasty, icky things out there that are being glorified. We want to lift up the name that is above all names and worship the one who is worthy of the praise. We want to glorify the one who is worthy of the glory and praise. And so we lift you up in this place, Jesus. We thank you for saving our lives, God. We thank you for saving our souls, Jesus. For making us whole, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody say Hosanna. Hosanna. Say it again, Hosanna. Hosanna. Yeah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We're going to have an awesome time this morning. How many have enjoyed the worship this morning? Oh, come on, act like you enjoyed it. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, I appreciate Alicia and Bashan and, and Craig, those guys are, amen, the atmosphere is right. How many know the atmosphere is right? Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the young people. Let's give our young people a big hand. Amen. As they go down, those that minister to them, our young people are taught the Word of God as they attend the classes downstairs. And um, so they're not just down there to be babysitted. I mean, you know, they're down there to be taught. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but 
I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that a seed was planted in my life at a very early age. Now, I didn't necessarily um, follow the leading of the seed, <laughs> but how many know God had something that he could grab a hold to later on? I said God had something he could grab a hold to later on. Amen. And, and bring a person out. Amen. So anyway, you guys were standing. Let's stand real quick. I'm going to pray with you. Let me bless everyone. God, we thank you for this Palm Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that's in the house today. We thank you that you always do an up and above. Lord, not only do you do uh, the ordinary, you do the extraordinary. You do the exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. But it's only according to the power that we give permission to operate in each and every one of our life. Today, God, we decree and we declare a decrease that you might increase and speak through my lips of clay and allow me to articulate accurately exactly what you have for this service, that you can be glorified and lifted up as we already have. And we're grateful, God, for us being able to continue to be in an attitude of gratitude. And Lord, we're just grateful for everyone online and everyone that's in the house. And Lord, today, we just thank you that we're free, we're healed, we're delivered, and we are able to glorify you in all we do. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. amen. Give God a big hand, amen. Amen. You can have your seats if you can. So I'm going to start off as I always do. I always like to preference the messages with Ecclesiastic 3 and 1 where it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And we need to study out, as I always say, we need to study words. And the seasons in your life is important. The timing of God for your life is of the utmost importance. And then also purpose. And I always say where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Amen? And then also... I like to, um, to allow us to recognize the fact that there are four basic methods of learning. They're not the only method, but there are four basic observation, association, teaching, and repetitious information. And we, we understand, and I've shared with you, that each one of those have proof text that goes with them, but I always like to tag repetition where it says in 2 Peter 1 and 12, and I plan to keep reminding you of these things even though you know them and you're getting along quite well. So no matter how well we're doing, God says we can do better than what we are. Amen. Amen. I believe there's more in us. Amen? Amen? And God knows that it is, so he challenges us to do better. Then I always talk about discovering for yourself a systematic method of making a practical application of God's word to your life on a daily basis. God wants you to discover the system that he custom designed for you to make life more sweatless. Because I don't know about you, I, I don't want to sweat like I used to. Amen. I don't want to swing at everything. I want to be targeted. I want to allow my energies to be targeted. I want to release when necessary. Amen? Amen? And so God says that it's possible because he made a system designed for you to do it with less sweat. How I many you know when Adam was put in the, in the garden, he didn't have to sweat. He did all the work without sweating. You got to realize that that was part of the curse when he said, and now you will work by the sweat of your brow. Your brow. So you got to understand something. I'm trying to come to where Adam was and, and not have to sweat so much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And then I always like to make faith declaration. We know death and life is in the power of our tongue. And the Bible says that in Proverbs 18, 21, you guys. So let's get our Bibles out, our tablets out. Amen. And, 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 our, and, and like I have always said, if you have memorized the scripture and you got it all in your head, just hold your head up high and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. I am what it says I am. I trust in it. I rely on it. I live through and by it 
always. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. Give God a great big hand. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. We know that our theme for this year is giving God more in 2024. And our primary scripture were in Isaiah 50 and 7 and also in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And we're looking at focusing our faith, recognizing that there's more in us to give. And so um, when we look at Hebrews 11 and 12, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are so compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, but despised the shame. But now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we realize that there's a reward when we're focused and faithful. Amen? Then in review, we've been talking about also David and how uh, when he penned Psalm 19, he gave some pertinent information to each and every one of us. In Psalm 19, it talks about how the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. It says, day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So the firmaments and the heavens and, and all the galaxies and all the things that God has created has voice. And therefore, God says that there's no place on the planet that hasn't heard the speech or the language of God. How many have heard God without an audible voice? Let me see those that have heard God. You ought to hear him continuously in actuality because he ought to be prompting you, amen, amen. to do. And he's speaking all the time, you guys. Never believe, never think that he's not. So there's a language and there's a speech. They said there's no speech or language where their voice, the heavens and the firmaments, is not heard. So we know that God's speaking, but the key is, are we hearing him? In Mark chapter 4, it says that he that has ears to hear, let him hear. So you have to choose to hear. Amen? So in Revelation 2 and 7, it says, let he that has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And let is so important because, see, here's one of the key things. Both of those are significant. Uh, the ear to hear, and that's why I put that little emblem there, uh, because how I many know you need an ear to hear, but you also need a heart to receive? Amen. See, 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 the thing is, Amen. the thing is, pay attention because, see, you can have a heart to receive, but if you don't have an ear to hear, how I many know it can't get to the heart? See, you can have an ear to hear, but don't have a heart to receive. And how many know you still, amen, you still averted the process, amen? So, so, so we need an ear to hear and a heart to receive. Everybody say, I have an ear to hear, but I have a heart to receive. So that means that we have to sensitize ourselves uh, to the things of God. We have to sensitize our hearing and not desensitize ourselves by rejecting the voice of God when he speaks to us. Because we can harden our hearts. We can desensitize ourselves if we don't allow God, uh, if we don't act on what God prompts us to do. If we're not sensitive uh, to his prompting. So we have to have that heart to receive and the ear to hear. We need both. Everybody say, I need both. I need both. Say, say it again, I need, both. I need both. So the message today is really for me as much as it is for you, but my message is, I'm trusting. Everybody say, I'm trusting. Say it again, I'm trusting. See, it's time for us to come to that place to where we genuinely trust God. Not just say it, but we genuinely, in, a, in our inner man, in our heart, trust God. We have ears to hear, and we have to question ourselves, do we really let our ear hear what God is saying. See, when we genuinely hear pertinent information or relevant information, how many know we respond by, I do personally, by giving confirmation of, I heard that. Anybody ever been there? I got it. Hmm? Amen. See, it wasn't that I just listened to it, but I heard it. How many know it went a little deeper? See, I shared how uh, last week how Paul and John both had heard and obeyed the word of the Lord. When we looked in Isaiah uh, chapter 40, Isaiah prophesied John's work 
prior to him being born. So we have to realize that God has an assignment prior to our birth. I mean, you know, you weren't born without an assignment. See, you had something to perform, a function in the earth realm, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Amen. So 700 years earlier, Isaiah in Isaiah 40 and 3 uh, spoke this. He said, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway. So John's assignment in the end, we have to realize the assignment is costly. The, the assignment uh, is sacrificial, and, but, but, but it's, it's necessary in order for God to get into the earth realm what he desires to get into the earth realm. But, 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 but the cost of John's assignment was to lose his head. See, you have to understand that that was the final cost for John's completion of his assignment. And see, it's also universally accepted that Paul was also beheaded by the Romans under the, 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 the emperor Nero. If we really are students of the word, we come to realize uh, both were high value targets. Everybody say, I'm a high value target. See, now I want you to understand what you just said. Now, you put a target on your back when you just said it for those that did say it <laughs> because you are a high value target in the kingdom. Are you hearing me? That means that, that, that you're one of the generals, that, that you're one of the, the forerunners. You're a, a five-star general. You're one of those that when they take you out, many lives are affected by them taking you out. That's who John was. That's who Paul was. When they took them out, how many know that they affected, they're still affecting our lives right now. They're still impacting our life right now. And the enemy, how many know the enemy didn't do it? Come on now. You got to understand. But when they left here, how many know they impacted lives for generations to come. I'm just here today to say that you're a high value target. You got to realize that you're the one that's going to turn the family around. You're the one that's going to be the example of what a marriage really looked like. You're the one that's going to be a great grandfather. You're, you're the one that's going to be a good grandmother. You're the one that's going to be the good wife. You're the one that's going to be the good husband. You're the one that's going to turn that curse around. It's time to turn that curse around that's on the house. You're the one, it's not somebody else. Stop trying to relegate it to your older sister, your older brother, somebody else that you think ought to be turning around, somebody that didn't do the kind of stuff that you did. God allowed you to do it on purpose so that when he got a hold to you, folks will know there's got to be a God. That's what Paul said. <laughs> You got to understand, it was a purpose to it. Everybody say it was a purpose. See, as stated, Isaiah foretold of John. John said himself, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. So I, uh, uh, John self-identified himself. How I many you know it's time for you to really know who you are. Huh? I say it's time for you to know who you really are. Not who you profess to be. Not who some other somebody else told you you were. See, it's time to know who you really are and your value in the kingdom of God in spite of where you came from, in spite of what you did, in spite of how you did it, in spite of who you did it would, you got to know that you're valued in the kingdom of God. Because if therefore any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old thing passed away and all things became new. And we have to recognize and stop uh, seeing ourselves inferior based on maybe something we might have done or didn't do. <laughs> the Bible says Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit. That's the requirement. You have to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, get out of your flesh. Say it again, get out of your flesh. 
That's the key. Get out of your stinking thinking. Amen. Get out of your flesh. Walk in the spirit. And the Bible says you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. How many hear what I'm saying? See, both Paul and John were called at an early age. Both answered. But Saul of Tarsus, huh, who became Paul, had to have his life repurposed. How many know all of us has to have our lives repurposed? How many understand that? That God repurposed your life. Uh, put your hand on yourself, say, God repurposed me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, see, and, and when he repurposed Paul, how many know he, he displayed transformation in high death, <laughs> in HD? How many know when you read the Bible, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I know that it's the power of God unto salvation to all those that believe. How many know he wasn't taken down? He, he, he stepped it up. <laughs> Yeah, I know what I did, but that was then. This is now. See, we got to understand he was Saul of Tarsus. But how many know he became Paul? <laughs> then he wrote to his son in the Lord. He said now in 1 Timothy 1, verse 16 through, uh, 14 through 16, he said, oh, how kind our Lord was, for he showed me how to trust him and become full of the love of, of God, of the love of Christ Jesus. See, 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 and I know this don't apply to any of us, but Paul said that God was merciful, that, 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 that he was long suffering, but, but in the process, he showed me how to love him. Huh? See, 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 I don't know about you. I got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, ha <laughs> ha. But I didn't know how to love him. Paul said he showed me, come on. See, emphasis for me is on showed. He showed me, huh, how to trust him. See, you, 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 you got to understand that. See, you could, you could interchange that trust with love. I'm going to show you in a minute. In verse 15, it says, how true it is and how I long that everyone should know it. Paul said, I want everybody to know how to trust him, how to love him. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I was the greatest of them all. Verse 16 says, but God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me. Oh, 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 well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? He said that, that God had mercy on him because he had purpose. Now, y'all know he was the persecutor of the church. He was there when Stephen was stoned and, 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 and everything else. It, in, in actuality, he was the one that, that it was assigned to, to, to persecute and to, 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 to allow a certain Christian to be stoned and, and killed and all those things. But he said, God allowed these things in my life so he could use me. <laughs> oh, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, huh? See, all these things happen because God had repurposed me that he could use me as an example to show everyone how patient he is with even the worst sinners. Anybody here ever sinned before? Let me see the hands of those that sinned before. Let me, let me see the hands. Anybody that don't have your hand up, we're going to lay hands on you. <laughs> Amen. He said he's going to, he repurposed me that I could be an example to show everyone 
how patient he is, even with the worst sinner, so that others will realize that they too can have everlasting life. Uh, there's no exclusion in this. See, that jumped you right back to John 3.16. You ought to be able to hear that just resonating in your spirit. God loves you if don't nobody else love you. God loves you if you don't love yourself. Who hear me in the house? Who, who, who heard what I say? I say, God loves you if you don't love your own self. Yeah, 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 yeah. And his love is an undying love. Yeah. See, Paul, y'all remember him on the road to Damascus? Paul saw the light, heard the voice, but didn't know how to, choice, to trust the voice from the light. Oh, it's obvious that's why he said he, he had to show him how to love or to trust him. How many hear what I'm saying? See, Paul wanted us all to know we can trust God. Look at your neighbor and say, you can trust God. Come on, say it again. You can trust God. See, I got a pop-up. See, you got to realize that if people have been breaching your trust for most of your life, I don't care whether it's God or who it is, when you get saved, how I many know there's still a breach in there in the trust area? See, I, I don't care who it is, especially, now I'm just throwing, throwing it out there, men don't get offended, uh, but especially if your father was the one that breached your trust. Because now we're talking about trigger words. Everybody say trigger words, I'm just saying it. You gotta understand, now God is saying, I'm your father. How many realize, it don't matter who it is, the word is what triggers the resistance. But God is showing us that Paul says, I'm gonna show you how to trust me. I'm not gonna breach your trust. I'm gonna be there when I say I'm gonna be there. Whatever promise I make to you, I'm gonna keep it. Huh? I'm gonna show up when nobody else show up. I'm gonna be your protector. I'm gonna be your provider. I'm gonna be your security. I'm gonna be a real father to you. How many understand what I'm saying? See, you got to understand the way we are designed is that we're inclusive in certain areas. Oh, you know, just a little papa, you know, all men like that. I mean, you know, how are you going to throw all of us under the bus? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all women the same. How are you going to throw all the ladies under there? Hey, everybody ain't. My lady ain't like that. Just saying, just saying, you know. I mean, understand what I'm saying? But we have to understand, the Bible does teach us that Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's what Paul was saying. And he said he was the worst. So that let me know, you ain't gotta jump the bridge because you sin and you think God gonna get you because Paul said he was worse than you. He said he was first. He was the worst of the sinners. So that means whatever sin you did is a little lower than what Paul did. And yet and still God saved him. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? So if God saved him, guess what? He can save you too. Huh? No matter what you did. <laughs> I mean, no, God can save you. We all sinned and came up short but God made up the difference. Anybody ever came up short before? Now I ain't talking about that way, I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. But God made the difference. Number four, he says, I was the worst, but God had mercy and he repurposed my life. Number five said, he used me as an example to show everyone how patient he is with even the worst sinners. See, you gotta understand, we, we quote John 3.16, but John 3.17 is just as important. See, you gotta understand, 
the Bible says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world by him might be saved. So that means to me that God wants to save all of us. Now all of us might not come in, but the, the salvation is available. How many recognize the salvation is available? Are you hearing me? For everyone to be saved. Amen. So Paul, after giving his life to the Lord, found out that he still has some trust issues. Anybody find out that you had some trust issues after you got saved? Uh-huh. See, I realized after I had given my life to the Lord, I didn't know how to trust Jesus either. Huh? See, 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 trust is a little deeper. I'm saved. But, I, but I'm not quite sure <laughs> what this, this salvation looked like. Huh? See, I don't know if, if you're going you to break wide on me like some other folks did. <laughs> or or, or you're going to stick it out. <laughs> huh? But, but how many know you can trust the Lord? Huh? I say you can trust the Lord. See, see Jeremiah said, Blessed, blessed, that blessed is powerful. See, see, that means that you have the uncanny, innate ability to prosper over adversity. Blessed, you're empowered to prosper. Blessed is the man that trusteth, everybody say trusteth, in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Verse 8, for he shall be as a tree. See, and he's giving you an example of what you look like. <laughs> you, you're going to be as a tree planted. Everybody say planted. Uh-huh. Planted by the waters. And that spread it out her roots. How I many of you know it's the root system that makes the difference? Yeah. Amen. You spread out the roots by the river. I said by the river. I said by the river <laughs> of life. Amen. And shall not see when heat show up. When it get hot, how I many you know it doesn't bother you? Because your roots are deep. Huh? It, it don't matter how hot it get. You don't have to trip on it because your roots are deep. Amen. And it ain't talking about that little crazy song, it's getting hot. But anyway, it says when it get hot, don't you take nothing off of it here. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got deep roots. Everybody say deep roots. Deep roots. See, see, you got a system to deal with the heat, huh? to deal with the cold. Y'all better be ready for it because cold coming. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got a system in place huh? to supply because the roots are close to the water. I say the, root, the roots are close to the water. And because the roots are close to the water, how many know it says her leaf shall be green? See, when the leaves are green, how many know the green speaks to life? See, 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 the tree can't be dead if the leaves are green. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, you gotta know it, you gotta know it. See, see, see. See, I got another pop-up, so you got to understand. See, that's why the Lord cursed the fig tree, because it was lying. Oh, I'm going to leave that one alone. See, I, I, I don't know, it just jumps out. But see, see, the fig's supposed to grow before the leaves show up. But the leaves show up, and that says that there's some figs in there between them. But because there are not any, I mean, no, the Lord didn't curse the leaves, he cursed the root. See, see, you got to kill it at the root. See, see, you don't kill a thing uh, at the fruit. You got to kill a thing at the root. <laughs> Come on, see, that's why it makes a difference where you're planted at. It makes a difference where you're planted at. Where are you planted at? I didn't say where you're jumping at, where you replant. I said where are you planted at? It makes a difference where you're planted at.
if you want green leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. How many know the drought don't bother you? I gotta keep moving. <laughs> but the drought don't bother you because you're planted by the river. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You ain't no fake, flake, or phony. You don't have leaves without fruit. How many understand it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a producer. You're not a hypocrite. You're not a pretender. You're a contender. Any contenders in the house? You're contending for the faith. Psalm 92, verse 12 and 4. You got to read that. It says, but the godly shall flourish like palm trees. Here we go again. And grow tall as the cedars of Lebanon. See, you got to understand what that looked like. How I many you know those trees are so round, it might take you 30, 40 minutes to get around the tree. So it's, it, it grows tall as the cedars of Lebanon. For they are transplanted into the Lord's own garden and are under his personal care. Oh, I'm going to help you out a little bit so that you don't get all twisted like some folks do. It said they will still produce fruit and be vital and green even in old age. Oh, y'all missed that one. Verse 14 says, even in old age, they will still produce fruit and be vital and green. See, I hold on to that one because I'm a little more mature than some of you. A little, 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 got a little bit of something, something. But the key is, I'm vital. Huh? I got fruit and some green stuff. I'm rolling with it. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Because I'm planted <laughs> by the river. <laughs> I'm planted in the river. See, I didn't want to just get by the river. I needed to get up in here. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? You hear me, Pastor Vicky? See, I had to get up in here. I'm in the river. So I know my, I'm being watered. Everybody say, I need to be watered. I need to be watered. See, see, if you're not water, you won't grow. You need to be water. But even in old age, they will still produce fruit and be vital and green. See, see now, I kept interchanging trust with love. But whom we love, we trust. Oh, I, I say it again. I said, whom we love... We trust. See, you, you can't love them. I don't care who it is. See, see, I, I love this woman and I trust this woman. Huh? Because she done stood the, the test of time. I mean, no, it's the test of time that makes the difference. See, 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 it's just like respect. Y'all know folks be talking about, uh, you going to give me my respect. Well, I ain't going to give you nothing you don't earn. <laughs> ain't getting it just because you said I'm going to give it to you. Don't get it like that. Anybody know what I'm saying? I mean, no. Respect is not that, 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 that station on your TV. It don't come on demand. Uh, I mean, you know, it's earned. I respect her, huh? Because she earned that. I respect him because he earned that. I respect him because he earned that. Huh? It didn't come on demand. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth about me. See, 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 that's how I operate. And in, in actuality, you do too. You do too. You might not say it. You might be scared. See, see, see. 
<laughs> See, I ain't squirt. If I don't trust you, I don't trust you. Huh? And all you got to do is ask me a question. You trust me? No. See, I ain't got to play a little game with you, and I don't care about hurting your feelings. Don't mean nothing to me. See, because you didn't have to get your feelings hurt. You asked me the question. I told you the answer. <laughs> I'm just really, you know what I'm talking about, T.T. Come on now. I just got to tell the truth. I ain't going to step in and lie. Oh, oh, oh. I don't play that. Just tell the truth. <laughs> Amen? See, you got to understand how important it is that you know the word. Huh? See, we say we love God, but if you don't trust him, do you? See, and God's love is, is deeper than the phileo, the eros, or the storge. How many know it's the agape quality of love? So God, God's love is the deepest quality of love that's available. Amen. And we learn to step out of feelings and performance. Huh? Even in the Old Testament law, we have to step away from the legalisms. Amen. Uh -huh. Paul said it this way, and I want you to get the resume. See, Paul said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, talking about those that are running around being cocky. He said, if any other, other man thinketh that he has whereof, you got to understand this. See, 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 Paul would have been uh, uh, successful, and he was, according to the flesh. Amen. But he knew once he got saved that it wasn't, it didn't amount to anything to the Lord. So he said that he counted it but as dumb. But it went on, he says, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Mm. That's a heck of a statement. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisees. He said, I was of the, the, strict, the strict, strictest sect of the different uh, 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 laws that there was. I was of the Pharisees. I, I, they were legalistic. They, they were the, the, the sect that, that, that was above all others, that had rules and regulations that none other uh, sect had. And I was one of them. So if, if anybody's going to get some accolades, I mean, no, he's saying, I should. But he goes on. He said, I was the Hebrew of the Hebrew. He, he said, now, concerning the, the zeal, persecuting the church. Y'all know it didn't get no worse than that. Touching the righteousness, which is of the law. He said, I was blameless. <laughs> As I stated, both were called, John and Paul, and they heeded the call, but we know that Saul had to make a crossover. And the key is that each one of us got to make the crossover. You got to know that you can't finish the way you started. I say you can't finish the way you started. See, 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 because you have a, a new seed and the seed always reproduces after its kind. So if you're not reflecting the characteristics of God, my question would be, do you really have the seed or have you just pretended to have? Because you ought not be talking about, that's just the way I am, then change. Huh? That's just the way you need to be. <laughs> it's changed. And I ain't talking about getting no change out your pocket. I'm talking about change. Character. Amen? So we understand he crossed over, amen. He was Saul the Pharisee, but then as Saul the Pharisee, how many know he was amplified? But when he became a Christian, how many know he was also amplified? Huh? He wasn't ashamed, amen? Amen, so we have to understand that his character was and still is that he was an all-inner. Is there any all-inners in the house? I said, is there any all-inners in the house? There any all in, you done went all in for the Lord. You done, you done, you done forgot who you used to be. You done, you done lost your mind. Because if you haven't lost your mind, you're not all in. See, God wants you to lose your mind. 
But he also wants you to put on the mind of Christ. See, your mind messed you up. Your mind got you drunk. Your mind got you in the club. Your mind got you in the casino. But anyway, got you to the buffet. Your mind. <laughs> oh, what? I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> you know you just go to the buffet. You don't do nothing. You just go to the buffet. But anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> We're going to receive our offering. <laughs> Come on. See, they ain't even got no buffet no more. I heard so I ain't no more buffet. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to receive our offer. Yeah, you can't play that one no more. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you need an envelope, credit card, slip, or anything, raise your hand, you guys, and they'll bring them to you. I want to read a couple of scriptures here. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And I want you to understand what it looks like to really honor the Lord with your substance. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 11 it says, Give generously for your gifts will return to you later. Divide your gifts among many, for in the days ahead you yourself may need much help. If you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. Keep on sowing your seed, for you never know which will grow. Perhaps it all will. The key is always recognizing the fact that your seed is good. And the key is finding good ground to plant it in. I can attest to the fact that this is good ground. I know absolutely assuredly that when you sow, it's to the kingdom building, the kingdom work that's ahead. Amen. And, and, and God will always, as he always says, give harvest. It's always seed, time, and harvest. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, it tells us to, uh, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease and we have to recognize that all those principles are operating right now because the earth is still remaining so when i instruct you to sow amen the lord instruct you in actuality is that you can have an expectation and anticipation of harvest always know you never put a seed in the ground without expectation no, no sense in putting it in the ground if you're not expecting anything. And you're not expecting one seed back. How I many you know there's always multiple? Amen? God always multiplies. So if you're making out checks, make it out to RLCC. If you're online, you can go to either entity there or broadcast station and <laughs> studio is up and running. Amen. We, we running. We're going to be putting our, our Bible teaching and things out on, the, out on the web. And I'm just so excited about the restructuring. It's so much to be done. And we can't do everything in-house. I mean, no, we, we got to go ahead on and, and use social media in more multiple ways than we have. And I believe that God's taking us in that direction. Amen. So the Bible teaches us that give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into our bosom. It says with the same measure that we met or we give, God gives back to us. So when we sow sparingly, the Bible says we reap sparingly, but when we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully also. Amen. So always come with a seed in your hand if you can. If you can't, that's one thing. We believe God to give you a seed to, to plant because you're planting in good ground with expectation and anticipation of harvest. Always put your expectation out there. Amen. Amen. We could just pass that down if you guys would. Amen. 
So has everybody had opportunity to sow? You have? Let's stretch our hands out. Father, we thank you for the bountiful blessing on the house of God. We thank you, Lord, that we do have expectation and anticipation of harvest. We thank you for the hope that you put in our hearts. We thank you for the faith that you've given to us, oh God, over the years. And Lord, that we've seen results, miraculous results. We thank you for continuing to do that that only you can, God. Lord, we, we're grateful to be a part of the kingdom builders. Today, God, I pray blessings on every seed sown. I pray, God, to return not just 30 and 60-fold, but even 100-fold. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. amen. Give God a great big hand. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I'm going to be brief for one minute. I just got a couple of things I want to say. One of the things we got to realize is that, as I said, Paul was an extremist. Two things that he had, he had hope and faith. Understand there's a difference between hope and faith. The Holman Bible says this, you guys. Holman Study Bible, it says, both faith and hope look forward to the future. Hope looks over the horizons, see the, sees the things of the future, but sees the things of the future, makes them real, and leaves them in the future. Amen. Whereas faith looks over the horizon, see the things of the future, makes them real, and bring them to your feet. I help you real quick with that. See, I'm going to give you an example of hope and faith. See, hope as it would be, would be for a fisherman, the bait and the hook. But faith is the line, the reel, and the pole. See, hope hooks the fish in the dimension of the water, huh? Amen. But the line, the pole, and the reel is what brings him in to your feet. Uh-huh. See, 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 many of us done threw out and hooked some things, but you haven't been able to reel them in yet. See, your hope is out there but your faith hasn't been strong enough. Today, God wants you to reel some things in. See, God wants you to reel in a healthy marriage. God wants you to reel those children back in. God wants you to reel that family reconstruction, that reconciliation, that restoration. God wants you to reel huh, your attitude back. God, God wants you to to reel your patience in. God, God wants you to reel huh, your love in. God wants you to reel your peace back in. God, 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 God got some stuff. You got it hooked. You know you need it, but you don't know how to reel it in yet. But God wants to show you how to reel it in. This is your opportunity to get it reeled in. So if you know that you got some stuff hooked that you really want, but you haven't been able to get it in yet, I want you to stand up, I want you to stand up. If you're not born again, I want you to stand up, I want you to stand up. See, it's crucial that you see the results because that's what's gonna take you to another level and give you confidence that it can happen because you see the results. God's a results-oriented God. He wants, he don't want just promises, he wants results, amen. So it's time to reel it in. Look at your neighbor and say, reel it in, reel it in, reel it in. See, it's time to reel this thing in. <laughs> yeah, let's reel this stuff in now. You guys start coming around this way and come down over here. Come on down from back there. Come on around. We're going to pray with you real quick. Come on around. Come on around. Come on down. Give them a hand, you guys. Give them a hand as they come. Come on around. We're going to reel this stuff in. We're going we're gonna to reel this stuff in today. We're going to reel it in. We're going to... We're going to reel it in. It, 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 it's meant to be reeled in. It, it's not meant to just stay in the other dimension. you got to bring it in to this dimension. It's time to reel it in. 
Time to stop just hoping. Time to step out in faith and trust God. Allow it to come to full fruition, to manifest like it's supposed to, like it's meant to do. Come on up here. Vicky, come on up. See, I just want to encourage you. Whatever it is that you have hope for, it's time to get it reeled in. Time to allow God to become real to you. It's time for you to make up your mind. I'm not going to just keep on believing and wishing and promising and all these things. I'm going to bring this stuff in. Amen. And I don't know about you. See, I, I still got still got stuff that I want reeled in. I, I still got restoration in the family. I, I, I still got restoration between me and my children. I got, I got things that I want to see manifested, but, but I know it's going to take faith to believe God that I can reel it in and, 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 and I'm tired of just leaving it in the other dimension. I need it to come in to this dimension. I need, it to, I need to see the manifestation of what God has promised me that he's going to do in my life. Anybody need to see manifestation in your life? Anybody need to see healing in your life? Anybody need to see deliverance in your life? See, it's time for you to get in line. This is your time. This is your chance to reel it in. It's time in Jesus' name. Come on. We're going to reel it in. You can shut that down. Amen.